Hi, hope you all are having a good day. So imagine you have built a ticket booking website where users can come in, pay a certain price, and in return the websites give them the movie tickets, right? Now, from the start of receiving the money and then generating the ticket, your website probably had to do some operations, right? So let's say it took it 100 millisecond to generate a ticket, which sounds pretty typical. Now imagine a new Avenger movie came out and everything is going all right. Your website is selling tickets like crazy. Things are going well, right? Until let's say you are only left with one ticket and both Bob and Jim wants this ticket so bad. They literally press the buy now button like at the same moment or like 10 milliseconds apart, right? But your website only have one ticket. And if you remember, it takes like 100 milliseconds uh, to process one ticket, right? So what do you think will happen in this scenario? There's a very high chance that your website might give the same ticket to both Bob and Jim. And now they will probably go to the theater with the same ticket number and that might cause some issues, right? This is a very classic example of race condition where two or more users or devices is trying to perform a same operation at the same time and that kind of creates problems in the code sequence. If you want a bookish definition, uh, it's a race condition is an undesirable situation that occurs when a device or system attempts to perform two or more operations at the same time. But because of the nature of the device or the system, the operation must be done in proper sequence to be done correctly. Just like in our situation, our system needs 100 millisecond uh, to perform this ticket booking right but just because Bob and Jim is trying to do the same thing like at the sa exact same time uh, it's disrupting our system so in this video I will show you how you can handle race conditions in your JavaScript code base and save your website from disasters so I have written a simple post API here that basically just saves user information into the database so first I'm accepting the name and the email from request body and then I have a uh, query here that's supposed to insert the data and inside the values I'm getting all the values inside an array you notice the ID this ID is coming from a variable I have set up here uh, let ID equals 1 when a new user is inserted I increase the ID so what it's supposed to do is when you call it the first time the ID will be 1 and then when you call the second time the id will increase and will be two when you call third time three you know uh, basically trying to replicate sql's incremental id now if you are wondering why i am doing it in this way why not just use uh, sql's incremental id well because i wanted to demonstrate the rest condition right so uh, this is probably not a real life code but hopefully it will give you an idea how to handle rest conditions I have another file test.ts where I'll be calling this APIs. So when I run this API, it will run on localhost 3001 and the API route is slash user. And I have some dummy data here uh, with some name and email. Here I have this for loop that will supposed to loop through all the data. And inside the loop, I am calling the API and passing the data as a body. And then if the response is not okay, uh, throw an error. If it is, then just console the response. So let's run the app. PM run dev. So you can see it's running on port 3001. And now let's run the test file. Run test. Yes. You can see all the data are inserted. I check my database. Go to tables. You can see everything was inserted and with a incremental ID one two three four. Everything went well, right? But in real life, everything may not go well. If you look at our code, we are actually using a wait to wait for this request to finish, right? That means all of our request is coming uh, sequentially. But what if we don't wait? What if we remove this await? And uh, let's comment all this and try to run it again run test yes 
let's go to our database refresh this time you can see all of the IDs are 5 so it did not increment and our code failed to uh, handle this scenario let's see why if you remember this API where we are actually doing some database operation right so this process takes some time to complete probably 50 milliseconds maybe 100 maybe 300 we don't know right but when we are calling the API we're actually not waiting for one request to finish all of these four users are now kind of being inserted like at the same time which our code did not handle so hopefully now you have a decent idea what risk condition is and how it may occur like in your code base so let's see how we can fix this one of the popular way to handle risk conditions is using some sort of locking mechanism so let's try to create one of them for us uh, let's create a lock and it will be a result promise promise dot love now we can use lock dot then and inside here we can put all of this async code So now before increasing the ID, we can wait for this to finish, right? So let's set this to a variable. New lock, new lock. And we'll await this. It should work, right? So let's try again. Take the database. You can see, unfortunately, it did not work. You can pause the video now and try to find the bug. If you do find it, uh, please uh, leave it in the comments before I uh, give the solution away. All right, so the problem is by setting this promise into a new variable is allowing them to run independently, right? It's not maintaining the promise chain. So to fix this, We'll just have to set this to that same variable, which is lock. I have the lock here. Save this. Now, if you run it again, let's go to database, refresh. You can see it's working. You can try it again. Refresh. So yeah now it's working so if you want further explanation on this locking mechanism make sure to subscribe to my newsletter that i'm working on uh where i'll be going deeper into some computer science topics uh hopefully it will help you guys to uh, understand some important stuff the first issue will be out on november 1st so make sure to visit letter dot com and subscribe to the newsletter i will also link it in the description so check that out uh, but yeah that's pretty much it that's how you can uh, handle race conditions uh, in your node.js code base uh, there's also another library called async mutex i think yeah, this one Make sure to check it out. It gives you some extra features uh, that might help you to handle these scenarios. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.